Welcome back to Excel Exposure. Today I have a very exciting video lesson for you. That of course depends on your definition of exciting, but I will be walking you through a macro that I've written related to this purchase order and show you first how the how the macro functions as intended and then also show you how I created it. And at the end I have um, some additional assignments for homework if you are so inclined. First you'll see we have a purchase order form. This is blank with only a few things filled out. Um, the main areas I'm going to be using are this PO number, PO date, which have names up here, named ranges. And then I also have these line items, which uh, will be populated with products and their prices. So you click this button here to start it out. Um, you'll see this box comes up. This is something you usually don't see in Excel. What it is is a user form that is created in Visual Basic. So I've created this window, put the button where it is, put everything. Um, where it needs to be so that you can have a, a little entry point for someone to enter information. So if we change the PO number to let's say 1234 and then we hit go to product selection. Another box that I've created comes up. It's got a product list. You'll see there's a long listing of different products that comes from this product listing tab. Um, whenever you pick a product, so let's say ice cube tray, you'll see down below them it will populate with all the relevant information about that product. So let's say we wanted to buy two ice cube trays and we'll put shad selection. Um, let's pick something a little more fun, a frisbee. Let's buy ten of those. Um, and a horseshoe set. We'll buy three. And then two more items since I have five things that I can buy. I'll do an air conditioner because it's very hot out. And a dining room table. All right, and it, my purchase order is complete. So I hit OK, and you'll notice that everything I just chose, all the applicable information related to it, the quantities, the product description, and then from this product listing table, it grabs the product ID and the price. Then it also summarizes by line the totals, adds some tax, and creates a total. There's much more functionality you can add to something like this, but I want to at least give us something that we can talk through, and I'll show you how to use the user forms and also some additional um, usage of coding. So we will go to our developer tab and click Visual Basic and you'll see it'll pop up here. The main areas that you need to be focused on for this piece are not the Microsoft Excel objects but the forms and the modules. First let me just show you the module real quick because it's very simple. It basically tells whenever you click on this purchase order form button it'll run run the macro display form that runs this macro which basically just shows the PO generator and here's the PO generator so you'll see this is very very much like uh, what I showed you earlier except this is where you create it if you want to add a new form you right click here you can go to insert user form and it'll start as a blank one but I've already created these just to save, uh, save us time in the video no, I do not so PO generator. Um, you'll see that there are various items here. This is what's called a label. You'll see up top it'll say the name of it and then what type it is, label. So we've got another label here, label 4. We've got a text box. Now for anything that I'm going to be using, I actually go in and change the name to something that's a little bit more easy to understand in the code. So text PO number is the text box for my PO number. And then you'll see we've got a button here which is the product select button. So, when someone selects this, if you double click, you can add some code to happen whenever someone clicks this. So, I'll double click this, and you'll see private sub product select button, which is the one I was just showing you, underscore click. And one thing that's important to note when you're looking at any of these items, in the bottom left, there's a properties menu. This window will show you all the relevant properties for this particular item. So, for example, PO number. This is a label. The name is label 4. What you want to notice is the caption. The caption says PO number. So that's if I change this to say anything else, it'll update the label. That was a little too much text, but it was just to show you how it is. Now any of these can also be modified during the code. So if I did something like label 4 dot caption equals and then in quotes I have a PO number, that in VBA code would change that label to display that. 
So it's important to know what's in the properties window for each type of item and what you can modify using using the code. And also you can change some of these right now if you wanted to change like the color, for instance, like I did. Um, you know, you could go ahead and do that from here. So when someone clicks on our button here, first thing it'll do is application.screenupdating is false. That'll make sure that if anything's going on on the screen itself in the spreadsheet, like whenever we add something to a box or we, or you know a cell gets populated. If you have this as false, it won't show the user what's happening in the background until the macro is, is completed. So I usually do that to begin with. Um, then here, we're going to grab a text PO number dot value. That is text PO number here. And then the value is one of the properties of it. Once someone puts something into it, there will be something I can grab from there. So I'm putting range PO number dot value which is this box so range PO number dot value equals the text box the value of the text box so whatever you put in there it'll grab it and it'll put it into um, the PO number range then I grab the current date which is just shown as date and I set that as range PO date dot value so the order which which these happen are relevant. If you have the range on the left, you will be assigning whatever's on the right of the um, equal sign to that range. So this is saying this cell is going to equal whatever's in here. If we had that flipped around and text PO number dot value equals range PO number dot value, you would be assigning, you'd be taking what's in that range and putting it into the text box. So it's really important which way you have these um, these equal signs. Then, um, since they click the button, they want to go to the product selection user form. I take PO generator and I hide that. And then product selection, I show that. And then I change my text PO number box to be um, blank, just in case someone runs it again. So here we'll go into the product selection screen. This again, I just created using uh, using various components. This is uh, what we call a list box, and any of these can be found in this thing called the toolbox here. If this isn't showing go to the view menu and make sure you've clicked the toolbox it should pop up but this is where you can get um, labels and a uh, drop down box which is called a combo box um, list box there's buttons so really all the things that I'm putting in here come from this toolbox here now for this for this user form I actually don't want things to only happen when you click a button but I also want to use this product um, list box and whenever anyone selects something, these items below get populated with the current item. So if you'll remember when I was selecting items, before I chose the quantity and added it to the selection, whenever I clicked one of these, it would tell me the product name, the product ID, how much it is, and the category. So in order to do that, we need to double click this list box to see what kind of code is behind it. So you'll see it says private sub, product list, click. And when you double click that, and if you have no code, it'll automatically give you that private sub up top and the end sub down bottom, and you just got to fill out the rest. So, this macro, like, like I said, in case you're unaware, anything with an apostrophe is a comment. So this doesn't run as code, but it's just there for when you're looking at the code so you can understand what you wrote. It's a good practice to get in, in, in the um, habit of writing comments just so that if someone else is looking at your code, they understand what's going on. But also just in case you happen to forget why you did something, it, it's a good way of just giving you some, uh, some nice text to describe it. So first, what we need to do is uh, declare some variables. There are a few different types of variables that you could be using. Um, some of the more popular ones are string, um, currency, uh, date, I think there's something like 12. A lot of them you won't need to, um, but you should look into, uh, go, ahead, go ahead and Google it. I think Osgrid has a good explanation of the various kinds. Each of them have a limit, and so something like an integer is something that you can only use, um, you can only use whole numbers for it, and I believe it's negative 32,000 and some change to positive 32,000. So if you uh, have a number that's like 200,000, you can't use that as an integer because that integer um, data variable type will not hold it. One thing I'd say is you, you should go ahead and Google some of these to understand a little bit more about how, how the variables are. But um, but for now we're just using string, which is uh, any kind of text that you want to, to display, and currency is just for uh, dollar amounts usually. 
So I've declared my variables here. You basically make up a name for whatever you want them to be. I have a product ID that I want to use, current product, which is the product that's selected. Unit price would be the price related to it, and product category. Now, as of right now, these aren't doing anything. I'm just saying to um, Visual Basic that these are going to be my variables that I'm going to use, and later on there'll be some code related to it. This item, as you can see, grabs the current product. So current product, which is my string up here, is going to equal whatever the product list value is. So that's whatever's currently selected. And since this happened whenever someone clicks it, it should be whatever they clicked. Then what we're going to do is change some of the labels, like you saw, uh, to reflect the items in the product. So we'll change the product name, um, the label for it, to reflect the current item. So we do label product name dot caption equals, and then whatever you put in quotes, we'll just take directly as text. You can use an ampersand to then what's called concatenate, or just basically um, combine the two. So it would say product name with a colon, and then current product, which is the description of your current product, will show up as the product name. Here, for the other ones, I need to actually do a, a VLOOKUP to find out what the product ID is, what the product category, and the unit price is, because really the user has only selected an item in a list box so far. So here, I'm going to do product ID equals application dot worksheet function. So you have to add that whenever you need a uh, function that isn't in VBA, but is actually something that Excel uses. So application uh, refers to using the application of Excel. Uh, worksheet function is one of the functions that um, are allowed in a worksheet, and then VLOOKUP is the kind that we're going to use. So we want to look up the current product, which is the uh, product description, and we're going to be looking that up in this product list here. So let's say you had can opener. It's going to look up can opener on that list, range product listing, and you can see here I've named this product listing. Then it's going to go to the second column once it finds can opener. So that's the product ID. You'll see we do the exact same thing for um, category and retail price. The only difference being instead of the second column, you're grabbing the third and the fourth column. And that in effect makes it so when you click something in the list box uh, all of the information about that product is shown below. Now if we go back to our user form here there is another area where there's a good amount of, uh, of coding and that's in this add selection to order. So if we double click this you'll see it says add item which is the name of the button and it's click so whenever this is clicked this should be what happens. Again I have the application screen updating is false this time I have a few more variables. Uh, that integer that I mentioned, um, since these these numbers are relatively low and they're all whole numbers, integer is a fine uh, variable type to use. Now, one thing I'm going to do first is figure out uh, which row to start on for the PO. So line item total, range line item total value. If you look on my purchase order, up in the top left here, I've got a line item total number. If I get rid of all of these, basically start this as fresh, you'll see now it's it's number one. So meaning it's on the first item. I've set the PO row start as 10, so that would be this row. And then since I have a 1 here for a line item, basically what I'm going to do is take that 10, add the 1, and I'll know that here in row 11 is where I will start um, start my line items for the PO. If this already had something on it, and this showed up as a 2, then the 2 plus the 10 would start me here. So it, it allows for additional line items to be added later um, without much problem. So you'll see that I grabbed that line item total, whatever that is at the moment, and then I also put PO row start, which is always going to be 10, and you can change that here if you decide to change the layout of the PO. I'll grab current product from the product list, just like I did in the last macro. And then I will also grab the quantity from the quantity box. Last time I didn't need the quantity since I was only looking up the product information. Um, now I'll do the same formulas that I did last time to grab the product ID, the product category, and the unit price. Now here is where I'm actually starting to populate this information onto the purchase order. So range B, so I know that the quantity is in, is in uh, column B. And for the cell reference, I want B11. So that's going to be PO row start plus the line item total. And that will increment every time you hit the button. So if, if you add, you know, if you click the button to add a line item, it'll then start on the next one for the next product that you select. Uh, range C is going to be the product ID. 
D would be the description and M would be the unit price. So since we already defined all of these variables here, we're basically setting all these cells values to equal these. Then what I do is reset um, the values of the user form so that you can tell that a product was added because if you just did all of that, um, it would still show the description of everything you had and it would still show the quantity and nothing would have seemed to happen. So I set uh, all the labels back to what they were before and the quantity box to blank. That way you can tell that something has happened when you click to add the item. Since the PO only has five line items, um, you need to end, end the program if five have been selected. So if line item total is five, granted this will already have done the fifth item because everything happens above it, then it will let you know that your purchase order is complete and unload the, um, the macro. So that's basically everything with how it's created. Uh, I will just run through it one more time to show you. Um, click purchase order form, enter something in, go to product selection, I'll pick just two items let's say. So you'll notice whenever I click this, like I said, these update down below. And that's based on the product list click macro. And then um, quantity box, if I throw something in and hit add to select, add selection to order. That's when it erases everything so you can tell that something actually happened. And now if I hit finish order um, prematurely, it would just have the horseshoe set here, puts in all the relevant information, and uh, works just fine. So, as a follow-up, this is the first video lesson that I'm going to actually have homework for. So if you see there's an actual homework tab here. I've split it up into different levels. So beginner level assignments, intermediate level assignments, and advanced level assignments. Feel free to read through these. What you can do is once you're done, um, feel free to send them to ben at excelexposure.com. I'll write that um, here. I'm not entirely sure how the how the uh, response will be, but hopefully some of you uh, find it interesting and, uh, and a bit of a challenge. So I look forward to seeing what you can do, and I hope that this lesson was useful. Make sure to obviously download um, this from the website in order to edit it yourself. So, thank you very much.